What's going on guys, this is Ali here and today I'm bringing you a quick tutorial on lighting effects in Photoshop. Um, a lot of you, when you use uh, lights in photo manipulation, in photographs or whatever, you'll tend to use a flare to enhance, basically enhance any source of light or the sun. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you'll take a flare like so, have it unlocked, then you get an eraser on around about 170 pixels and you'll rub around the outside like so. and then, I'm just doing this very rough, and then you'll drag it onto your original piece, plonk it on, and then on blending modes, come down to linear dodge add, and you'll use that as the sun. And in some cases, this can look really good. It can fit the piece really well, and it lights up the scene very nicely. But, as you can see here, the sun looks really, really big in this piece. And so if I wanted to make it smaller, by going Command T to select it, then holding Shift and rescaling it down, and then pressing enter, you'll see that when I put the sun back to where I want it to be, or when I put the flare on top of the sun, you can see that where I've rubbed the flare out, you can see the edge, and it doesn't blend into the sky properly, because um, that's just the downfall of flares if you have them small in a large image. So I'm going to show you a quick way how to light up your scene really nicely, uh, look really professional, uh, it, it will look really professional <laughs> and um, yeah, it will just generally make your lighting much nicer and cleaner. So we're just going to delete this flare and you're going to come to your layer and you're going to want to duplicate your image. I tend to do this on top of uh, like a final image of a manipulation, so once I've finished the manipulation I'll reopen the final image and then do this on top of it. So you duplicate your image and then on, on the copy, have it selected, and then go to Filter, Render, and then Lighting Effects. Then on the right-hand side, that the panel over here will uh, pop up. Um, this is just the Lighting Effects panel. And basically, where you're going to want to start is picking the type of light. There are three different types. I'll talk you through them really quickly. Uh, the first one is Point, where basically this is my favorite. This is the one that I use for my manipulations. Um, you are given one point and this is a source of light for your image so what you do is um, bring your cursor onto the central marker and you can click and drag and you can move this wherever you want it to go this is where the source of light is going to come from and so for the, for the light color where this black box is you can obviously pick whatever color you want so I'm going to give this like an orangey tint maybe a bit of yellow kind of something around there so a nice kind of yellow. I'm going to pick that and then hit OK. Then hotspot. You're not. You can only use hotspot when you use a spotlight. So we're going to come onto that in a sec. Colorize. This is um, the color that you want the rest of the image to kind of have a tint of. So I'm going to go for like a kind of a skin color because in uh, sunsets, skin color tends to uh, be present quite a lot. So I'm going to have that around there. Then you can en you can enhance the exposure by dragging this bar up or down. So I'm going to have this fairly low-ish. It's going to be about minus 28. Gloss, metallic, uh, gloss and metallic I wouldn't touch because it, I just tend not to and I don't really think they enhance much unless you're working with any form of glossy materials or metallic materials or anything like that. So I'm just going to leave that for now. Ambience. I'm going to come to ambience here. And ambience is obviously going to light up or darken your scene. So I'm going to have the ambience on around about 90 or 85 because it really lights up the piece. And then and then you can also add textures and stuff to your lighting, but for now we're not going to touch into that because when you're doing uh, any form of lighting, you don't really want to add a texture unless it's maybe snowing or something similar like that. Um, but for now we're just going to leave it as no texture. Uh, so that is pretty much uh, the point light. Um, if you come onto the actual light itself, you can enhance the uh, intensity not only by enhancing um, the intensity up here but you can also click where this white bar goes around the circle and you can enhance the intensity there so I'm just going to leave it around about 25-ish like that uh, and that's what it's going to look like uh, when you've finished it so that will be the point light now if we come on to the next light that's the spotlight this is basically going to be I describe it as two eggs one inside the other and the smaller egg is where the source of light is going to be coming from. So we're going to hover that over where the sun would be. 
Uh, all of the settings on the right are exactly the same uh, for this light as they are for the, for the uh, point light. Um, apart from, with this one, you have hotspot. And this is basically the inner circle of these two rings. The hotspot is the smaller one. So if you enhance the hotspot, it's going to increase the larger uh, the smaller circle, make it larger. And you can shrink it, obviously, by moving it down. So we're going to have it around about there. And basically, uh, I tend not to use this for manipulations because I don't think that it blends into the sky very well. But what, but what you t can do is you click on these scale length uh, markers and you can pretty much enhance this light to whatever shape you want. If you want it like a radial shape, if you want it like a really squished, like elongated shape, you can have it like that. Um, so, I mean, I suppose I'd have it like this. But the only thing is, with this kind of light, you then have to up the ambience quite a lot to make the uh, to make the flare actually, or to make the light actually blend into the sky. Because otherwise, you get a really kind of crisp edge where the light is, and it doesn't fit very well. Um, so, also by colorizing this, you can make the flare blend in a bit more. So we can um, have it kind of like that. But I tend not to do this, so I'm going to cancel that. And um, that's basically how to work with the spotlight. And then you also have this last light, which I, I've nev I never really use. It's the infinite light. And basically with this, um, it's you leave all the settings exactly the same uh, to keep the colors and stuff the same. And if you drag, uh, you click and drag on this ball here that sticks out of this kind of 3D marker. When you drag it down, have the face down, it brings the lighting down. And then if you have the face completely towards you, it has the lighting kind of at its maximum. Then you drag it upwards and again brings the lighting down. So I suppose you can really control the kind of exposure um, with that. You can enhance the intensity again by clicking around and dragging this. But again, I'm going to leave it on around about 25. So I'm actually going to um, not use infinite or, um, uh, infinite or point light. No, infinite or spotlight. I'm going to use the point light. Oh, sorry for that. Um, so, like I said earlier, you move the central spot into the where the sun is in your piece, so that's going to be there. Um, then, with the settings, I've pretty much set them up exactly how I want them. No texture, ambience, I'm going to actually have on around about um, 80. Metallic, leave it on zero. Gloss, leave it on zero. Colorize, I'd recommend a kind of a pale skin tone. Hotspot, you can't use because that's not for uh, the point light. Uh, and then colour, I'm going to have it on this kind of 24 intensity yellow. So I really think that's starting to look nice. So now what you do is you either press enter or OK up here. So I'll just hit OK. And then it will have your final image. And so you have your final image, which is this one here, this top layer that you've just worked on. And then underneath you have the original one. So you can see the difference. In the original there's a lot more blues. It looks um, a little bit less sort of um, warm. And you, when you uh, turn the copy on, you can see that it's much warmer. It has a nice, much, a uh, much nicer feel to it. It has a really nice kind of glowy tinge to it of orange. That's just really nice. And also, the benefit of doing this on top of a duplicated layer is that you can then rub bits out of this uh, to enhance shadowing. So, for example, these these um, buildings on this side w would not be this color orange. So you want to come to your brush or your eraser, sorry, and bring it down to around about 100 pixels. And I'm just going to do this to show you quickly. You're then going to make sure you have your layer 1 copy selected, and you're going to rub out the orange on this side of the buildings. So you can do that. This is very rough. Like I would spend much more time doing this normally, but I'm just showing you how to do it. Um, off there. And as the as you kind of get closer to the edges of the building, start to like not rub out, don't rub out the whole building because the light would kind of peer around corners of buildings like you can see here. So you'd rub down this side here, but leave the kind of orange blurring into the dark bit of the building because um, that's kind of well that's how light works. It kind of peers around things. So you can erase the light wherever you want um, to make bits darker, so it adds a nice bit of contrast. And for now, that's pretty much it. That's um, that's how that's basically the basics of uh, lighting effects in Photoshop. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something from this. Uh, this I think that using lighting effects should be compulsory in photo manipulation because it's such a much more natural way of um, producing light in pieces. Uh, flares, I think, are quite tacky at the moment. So.
um, unless you can get them to fit perfectly, in which case that's fine. But for now, light, that's been Lighting Effect Tutorial 101. Um, I'm going to head off now, so thanks for listening. Be, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy the video. Um, please leave some comments on other tutorials that you'd like me to do. And uh, yeah, just uh, like the video. If this video hits 200 likes, I'll be doing a tutorial series where I do a tutorial pretty much every week. So that should be good. So yeah, um, get liking and I will speak to you later.